ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆರ್ ರಾಘವೇಂದ್ರ ಅವರು ಈಗ ಒಂದು ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸ ನೀಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಮೊದಲು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆರ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಸರ್ ಅವರ ಒಂದು ಕಿರು ಪರಿಚಯ ಸರ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಸಿ ಮ್ಯಾಪ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಎನ್ ಬಿ ಆರ್ ಐ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಡೆಹರಾಡೂನ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಶಿಲಾಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಎಮರೇಟಸ್ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಸಾ ಆನರರಿ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಸಿ ಮ್ಯಾಪ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಆಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೆಪಾಸಿಟಿ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಕರೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರಾವ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಎಂಗೇಜ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಟ್ರೈನಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸೈಂಟ್ ಆಕ್ಸಾನಮಿ ಅಟ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಏರಿಯಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಷನಲ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಎ ಬಟಾನಿಸ್ಟ್ ಸರ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಆಕ್ಸಾನಮಿ ಈಸ್ ಡನ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಆಕ್ಸಾನಮಿ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ಯಾಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಬಯೋಡೈವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಥ್ನೋ ಬಾಟ್ನಿ ಸರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಡ್ ಓವರ್ ಟೂ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಪೇಪರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಜರ್ನಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರೆಫ್ಯೂ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆಥರ್ಡ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಬುಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಬಾಟ್ನಿ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಎಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಚೀವ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರಾವ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಆಕ್ಸಾನಮಿಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಫಾರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಜಿಯೋಗ್ರಫಿ ಎಥ್ನೋ ಬಾಟ್ನಿ and uh, conservation and the contributed enormously to the knowledge of himalayan and uh, northeastern indian botany the special attributions are uh, energy and energy vast first hand field knowledge and exceptional ability to collect and identify new species and, and understand the and their ಫೈಟೊ ಜಿಯೋಗ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ವೇಷನ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರಾವ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ವಿಸಿಟೆಡ್ ಮೆನಿ ಕಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಯುನೈಟೆಡ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಡಮ್ ಜರ್ಮನಿ ಪೋಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಚೈನಾ ನೇಪಾಲ್ ರಷ್ಯಾ ಯುಕ್ರೇನ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಇನ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕನ್ಸಲ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕ್ರಿಟಿಕಲಿ ಸ್ಟಡೀಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಮನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಮನ್ಸ್ ಅಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಡೆಲಿವರಿಂಗ್ ಮೆನಿ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದೀಸ್ institutes of uh, these uh, countries he has also presented his uh, scientific findings in various international conferences in different countries nearly 4700 species uh, in uh, several floras have been uh, published by dr rao and his associates also nearly 20 new taxa described by dr rao have formed the basis for development of databases on indian flora uh, dr rao's extensive field work among the tribal packets in the states of northeastern uh, india especially in nagaland and meghalaya have brought to light many little known or unknown kinds of plants which avoid clinical experimentation for development of modern drugs more than 300 users of plants are enumerated in several of his uh, ethnobotanical publications there as for as i told there is published six books uh this background impact sir was in ahmedabad yesterday despite of traveling yesterday he has kindly accepted our invitation to deliver the talk vidyarthi galigella sir avara ond upanyasa baala upayogakavagutte syllabus nalli irthakanta conservation bakke ಇವತ್ತು ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸ ನೀಡ್ತಾರೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಏನಾದ್ರೂ ಡೌಟ್ಸ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇದ್ರೆ ಸರ್ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಚಾಟ್ ಬಾಕ್ಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕೇಳ್ಬೋದು ಅಥವಾ ನೀವು ಮತ್ತೆ ನೀವೇ ಮಾತಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ತಿಳಿಸಿದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ಅನ್ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ನೀವೇ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಸಹ ಕೇಳ್ಬೋದು ಸರ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಐ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಯು ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಓವರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡೆಲಿವರಿ should be no one will know
Yes, you can speak, sir. You can listen. Can hear you. Please speak. ಪಾಂಡು ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಪಾಂಡು ಈಗ ಅನ್ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ಕಂಗ್ರಾಚುಲೇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಮೆಂಡ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೆ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಎ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಮೋಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ಲಿ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ದಿ ಯಂಗರ್ ಜನರೇಷನ್ಸ್ and this is very much uh, needed i must also thank uh, ksta for giving me this wonderful opportunity of addressing the young uh, groups of uh, students on a topic which is very close and uh, very very much liked by me for almost three four generations i want to have decades so that is the topic in fact conservation almost from 1980 i started uh, work on conservation of flora when people were not even talking conservation at that time i started at that time but now everybody is talking of conservation and all that so anyway i must thank very profusely for this nice opportunity given to me uh, by this uh, karnataka state and uh, technology academy uh i have selected this topic okay conservation of threatened plants as you can see on the board but i would have loved to give the richness of our diversity the enormous floristic diversity in the country what we have how best we can utilize that and what are the problems in utilizing challenges that i should have talked and then followed by conservation you should have appreciated more but since uh, the topic selected is conservation of threatened plants right away what i do is i will give a glimpse of the richness of diversity of our country and uh, then come to some of the conservation aspects you can uh, i think in between kannada dal bekar maatad question bekadre kelavaru kelabodu but then uh, uh, you can note down my email uh, now in the after the lecture you can also ask questions but if it is not possible you can note down my email and you are free to contact me any time of the year any time you can or you can if you are in bangalore you can come and meet me you can discuss all your problem i am very glad to help you kindly note on all these things so with this uh, few remarks i will very quickly uh, uh, go to my slides and please note some of these slides i have taken from net and uh, therefore i request all of you you can freely use those slides but not for publication so they are all copyrighted material we should not publish those material so therefore please note this so in our indian region is a very wonderful country and uh, enormous diversity is there enormous diversity unparalleled diversity in fact if i talk of diversity uh, people always talk china is uh, much richer than india but i will say india is much richer than uh, china because in terms of infra specific diversity infra specific diversity and within the same diversity olage within the same species the amount of variation say one species i will give example ravalpia serpentina anta togali ravalpia serpentina you collect from kanyakumari and go on collecting it adana kanyakumari inda kashmir dorgu nu collect madidre you will get numerous variations numerous variation in terms of phenotype in terms of cytotypes ecotypes genotype all kinds of variation and that is the total diversity and that much of diversity no other country in the world has so therefore india is very rich in diversity that you should uh, keep it in your mind it is one of the uh, center according to vevilao it is one of the center of hindustani center it is called the hindustani center of 
origin of cultivated species. I think that whatever I have written, red important ones, please go through that. We have a large number of you know vascular plants, 18,500 species of vascular plants. These numbers which I have given, they have no sanctity in the sense, next time somebody goes for botanical exploration, the number goes on increasing. So therefore, as it stands today, it gives us a glimpse of what is the strength of our diversity. That is the one. And then approximately world's half of aquatic plants we get. Every alternate plant, aquatic plant is an Indian plant. That is the richness of our country. Cradle of flowering plants. Cradle of flowering plants means it is the primitive plants are there. In India, we have almost 130 primitive flowering plants, which indicate not only the origin and diversity of angiosperms. So therefore, we call this region as cradle of flowering plants. I think this is another thing. It's a credit to us. Indian region is considered as a cradle of flowering plants. That's another one. And the geological position, geographical position is such. It draws elements from Malaya, all the adjacent countries, all the adjacent continents, the material comes. Also, there are large number of adventive and alien weeds, how they are damaging the flora. At the end, I will talk. These are all mega diverse countries. The green ones, which I have shown, mega diverse countries, means there are very rich diversity. And Indian region is also one which has got high diversity. I think that's the uh, one you should uh, know. Now, again, this is just a number. Just those of you are interested, you can only note the number. That's all you know. But as I said, this number goes on changing. Some uh, 10 years back, it was only 15,000, today 18,000, and it goes on number. So as it stands today, we have so much of uh, angiosperm, so much of pteridophyte, so much of bryophyte. This is the number you can just note down. Anyone, any, if anybody wants to ask anything late, I will ask. I will skip some of these things very quickly. The advantage is we have a large number of endemic plants. Endemic plants means plants that are, are confined to our country only. They don't grow anywhere else. They are confined to our region. These endemic plants play a significant role for us because later on, when we go for any patent development or product development, the entire royalty, entire thing should come to our country only. Suppose we take a plant from China, suppose you take a... Sir, excuse me. Yes. Sir, the full screen mark has a slide change, sir. Still a gay there. Full screen, huh? Uh, yes, Iga? I change it, sir. Full screen. 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 Full Full screen. Full screen. Full screen. Full Full screen. Full screen. Full screen. Full screen. Full screen. Full screen. So, these endemic plants early, normal year, just year old, the endemic plants play a significant role in the economy. See, when we convert our biological wealth into economic wealth later on, the entire royalty should come to our country. That's when I will talk uh, depending upon the time later on. But you note down there is a rich concentration of endemic flora in our country, right? <clears throat> Why rich biodiversity? There are two, three reasons I will give you. India is the only country, remember, India is the only country which has almost all kinds of habitats you can think of on this world. Any habitat, habitat means a place where plants grow, like desert region, alpine regions, or cold desert region, evergreen region, these are the ones. So any habitat you can think of on this world, all habitats you find. So therefore, the diversity is very high. Number one, highest rainfall area is here. Coldest place is here. Highest altitude known for a flowering plant, which has entered the Guinness Book record, is in India. All superlative. So therefore, all these things add greatly to the rich diversity of our country. And it was in the geologic past, it was a part of Gondwana. What is Gondwana? All the southern continents. Southern continents, above the 11th and you, you should imagine now. Take the world map and see all Australia, Africa, uh, South America, New Zealand, all these continents were united in a huge landmass and that portion that was called Gondwana. So therefore we have elements, floristic elements from all these countries, South America, we have Australia, we have Africa, all these factors have added to the rich diversity. That is one thing and added to that, Himalaya is an active speciation zone. No other mountain system in the world, no other mountain system in the world 
is so active as the Himalaya because they are the youngest chain of mountains where new species are being created. Rather, every new species are being evolved. How? Because the species are migrating from China on one side or the Mediterranean region on the other side. And when they travel to almost 1,500 kilometers from one region to the other region, the genotype and phenotype change to such an extent they form completely independent species. So therefore, Himalaya is considered as an active speciation zone. As at the PUC level, if you remember this much is sufficient, Himalaya acts as an active speciation zone where new species are being evolved. That's one thing at least you should always uh, remember. Now the different color in the India map, the different color I have shown, each zone is a botanical province which shows different kinds of vegetation and flora. That's the one. Every part is a different, every where therefore we find a different, different flora, therefore high concentration, diversity. I hope you now, I have shown a few, quickly I will show because uh, this is not the purpose of my talk. You appreciate the beauty of this. Can we afford? So that is the question you should put yourself. Can we afford to lose these wonderful resources? Look at this. These are all slides I have taken from Sanjapa. It's a you know enormous amount of variation in leguminosity. Wonderful flora. Can we lose any of these things? We can't. We cannot afford. Now you see Aslipidaceae. Quickly I will go. These are all Aslipidaceae. Now economically significant. For example, this is Miristica. We have in our Western Ghat forest, Miristica species are there. And the aerial, for example, I am showing by arrow, the aerial here, the cover which cover the seed, the inside the seed you can see, the, it is covered. That funicular outgrowth it is called, that is aerial. That aerial is very expensive. So therefore, economically significant plants are there. Can we lose this? Can we? through our activities, human activities, can we make the species extinct? So that is not possible. We should not. And these are all from internet I have taken. Please see how beautiful our, the habitats, can you see all are from Valley of Flowers. Very beautiful. And it is called a paradise. In fact, botanical paradise. Such beautiful areas are there, Valley of Flowers in our country. And here, so many plants which are almost equated to Sanjeevini plants. Sanjeevini plants means that Ramayana Sanjeevini, which Hanuman goes, brings that Sanjeevini. That means having miraculous properties. Such wonderful plants are also reported here. So can we afford to spoil any of these things? Now this is the question. That's why I'm showing diversity. We should know what we have. Then we can think of conservation. In our own Western Ghats, in our own northern part of Western Ghats, if you see, we have Kasparatu, very ocean of flowers. Ocean of flowers we find. That is, hilltops are not pointed, but flat tops. And these are all where you cover during the month of September, enormous variations. Look at this, Uteroquilan and then Uteroquilaria. Both are combined. Ocean of flowers. These are both are very rare species. In, the, in your classroom, I think you must have worked also, Uteroquilaria. But it is rare, but abundantly available. Can we destroy this habitat? We are not, we cannot destroy this. Rather, we should put all our efforts to protect our habitats. Now, orchids, for example, wonderful. It is a gem of the flowering plants. Wonderful flowering plants are there. And uh, there are all of them are extremely beautiful orchid species are there in our country. Some are terrestrial, some are epiphytic, but they are all beautiful species. But orchid wealth has I have given how many species are there, how many numbers are there. You don't bother now, uh, at least the number and all that, but at least those interested you can take. But my point is, although there are 1200 species in our country, we have not been able to bring any of these things under the man-made settings or the botanical garden. For example, the right one, the right top, for example, this one, blue. This is a blue flowered orchid, the Vanda, Vanda cerulea, this particular orchid, a British botanist, when we were under the British rule, the British botanist Hooker, by name Hooker, who came to collect plants in this region, in the Meghalayan region, particularly in the Chirapunji area. And uh, Chirapunji region is okay? Okay. In the Chirapunji area, uh, 
he was able to collect seven men's head load in one day's field trip in one day artha maarkota idre ella no in one day how much one person can carry you can imagine he engaged seven people to collect this plant for planting it in the european botanical garden so in 100 years ago he was able to collect that much today near chirapunji area whole one month you survey you will not get seven plants to this extent the orchid wealth has been completely destroyed rhododendrons are also very beautiful in our country large number of rhododendron species are there all of them are worth introducing into our botanical garden these are all rhododendron there is also apart from that there are very interesting species like the divine soma now you have to know you can't hear it but please understand in the vedic literature vedic literature and that it is audience 5000 years old literature vedic literature there is the mention of soma or from this soma they used to prepare somras somras is equivalent to the present day scotch whisky i am just giving an example scotch whisky now we have forgotten our soma what is our soma we don't know what are the plants of soma we do not know but we have all fallen back on scotch whisky and the scotland from which scotch whisky comes scotland is earning money by way of this alcoholic beverage but our information is 5000 years old it is much more effective highly intoxicating highly invigorating and highly antifatic tonic it was so there was so much of um, um, uh, interest among this uh, soma at one time people the poor people who were not able to afford soma drink what they used to do they used to collect the urine of the people who had taken soma and drink arta aita nimge idu urine they were prepared to drink urine yake antandre avrge soma andre anta ondu interest ittu adralli yake antandre the one of the wonderful property is the active principle in soma passes through the alimentary system of human beings almost unmetabolized whatever property you find in soma the same property you will find in the urine so therefore they were prepared even to drink urine because of soma such was an attraction of soma but we have forgotten today i hope you appreciate this we have forgotten and we take scotch whisky and making scotland richer suppose we resurrect this suppose we resurrect the technology india can become one of the richest countries in the world so one species can change the economy of the country so we should go so therefore there are 27 species which are all surrogates of soma we don't know but suppose we really identify india can become a, a, a richest country in the world now this is a mansinkai of course you all know this this is capsicum mansinkai what is there in mansinkai we make sambar and chutney eat every day that's okay but this is the hottest chili hottest chili that we have in our country it grows in nagaland and manipur border and uh, suppose you touch this and wash your hand and uh, wash it with soap even then it is burning that much of pungence now the drdo people what they have done making use of this i understand they have prepared hand grenades and when once the hand grenades are bursted the terrorists if they are hiding even in 20 feet deep burrows they cannot hide there so many of them are caught with this chili so our biological material can also be used for biological warfare not only for our own eating and drinking but for that wonderful plants are there can we afford to lose all these certainly we cannot afford to lose any of these uh, species sir vishwajit uh, kini avaru yes yes hottest chilies sir grown in nagaland sir anta kelta idaru nagaland and manipur ha ha can you think one task a slide change aagtara sir ಲೀಫ್ಲೆಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಮ್ಲೆಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಮ್ಲೆಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಮ್ಲೆಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಮ
and put those genes in some common plants which can be grown all along some of the our enemy borders so that we can protect our country so we can use all this we can think our bio resources so this has become a critically endangered species today can we lose this species certainly we cannot lose this species and there are large number of sanjeevini plants sanjeevini plants means i am not telling the same sanjeevini which anuman brought from uh, the himalayas uh, you you all know the story of ramayana so i do not want to say but thing is there are large number of plants sanjeevini like in the same place where anuman brought those plants we have surveyed we have found a large number of medicinal plants which are equivalent to sanjeevini what is sanjeevini according to me sanjeevini is that plant which has that miraculous effect miraculous property of bringing back to a life almost a dead person a person is in coma and it can bring back to life so that is the miraculous property that kind of wonderful medicinal plants are there in the himalayan region can we afford to lose any of these things certainly we cannot afford to lose any of these medicinal plants yes not see what is the problem yes. there is it okay no i think is it okay now okay sir okay, okay. so there are uh, such wonderful plants which i equate it as sanjeev but don't say that this is the same sanjeev which anuman brought no we don't know what is that plant anuman yav plant tho mandidi argu gottilla but suppose we identify that plant india can become the richest country in the world so this is why so we cannot afford to lose any of these plants the drdo people have worked on this based on the uh, the ethnic knowledge they have identified a plant called the rhodiola rhodiola valichiana which has the only species that got the nullifying effect of gamma radiation so this they say should be the modern sanjeevini plant this is the plant the photograph is here those who are interested more they can discuss with me later wonder plant that has immunomodulatory adaptogenic radio protecting abilities of this plant it is in the cold deserts of himalaya so therefore we have wonder rich flora we have wonderful species unique species unique medicinal plants unique uh, aromatic plants and unique beverage plant everything we have got unique but there are severe threats operating severe threats means which are all a great threat to the existence of the species what are those threats human increasing human population human population is growing like anything and with increasing human population townships are expanding agriculture is expanding the road building activity is expanding developments are expanding so therefore i have just only you read only one sentence i do not want to say by 2110 the estimate is that the population is going to 10.5 billion or 2.5 times as many as the earth now supports you can imagine now itself there is so much of population by 2110 2.5 times more where are the there will be only people standing there is no vegetation that is the situation will come so the human population is threatening our biodiversity that is one thing therefore with the anthropogenic threats the problem is habitat clearance second problem yes sir any what problem the full, full screen is not uh, if this is clear you can see this only yeah. yes sir. I don't know. You are all experts, but the uh, hmm. problem is for you. And what will happen to me? Your <laughs> side. Okay, I'm sorry for the disturbance. Anyway, yeah. Hey, it was visible. Not going. visible now no sir not 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 visible not just a minute hey, just a minute i think you shall tell the, the audience you are stop again the birth act actually sir stop for one ye nakta ide adu alli browser inda jodha ide sir just browser ಟೈಮ್ ಓದೇ ಕಾಯಿಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ವಾ 
ಇವಾಗ ಬಂತು ಸರ್ ಬಂತು ಬಂತು ಓಕೆ ಸರ್ ಬಂತು ಫುಲ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಇದೆಯಾ ಎಸ್ ಸರ್ ವಿಸಿಬಲ್ ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಓಕೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಯಾ ನಾವು ಐ ಹವ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲಿಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಎ ಫ್ಯೂ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಮೇಜರ್ ಥ್ರೆಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಬಿಟಾಟ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರೆನ್ಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ಇ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಮೇಜರ್ ಥ್ರೆಟ್ ಮೆನಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಪೀಸಿಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸಪಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಒನ್ ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ವೇಸಿವ್ ಎಕ್ಸೋಟಿಕ್ ವೀಡ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸೋಟಿಕ್ ಇನ್ ಫಾರಿನ್ ವೀಡ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಫಾರಿನ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಿಮೂವ್ಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಅವರ್ ನೇಟಿವ್ ಫ್ಲೋರಾ ದಟ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಶೋ ಯು ಎ ಫೂ ಫೋಟೋಗ್ರಾಫ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ರಿಮೂವಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಡಿಸಿನಲ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ಸ್ shifting agriculture in the north east region shifting agriculture means they cut off the forest and clear that forest burn it grow the plants whatever they need for 2 3 4 years and when the yield decreases they abandon that area go to some other region and repeat the process so therefore that's why it is called shifting agriculture in the north eastern region these are all some of the major problems that we are facing i have shown in the picture also human population forest clearance dense in the himalayan region i am showing these photographs how dense vegetation has been cleared and it is for shifting agriculture this is for tuming this is for terrace and also the you know cultivation agriculture invasive alien weeds this is, please remember this one invasive alien weeds all are foreign weeds which have come colonized during last 100 150 years but what has happened is once they have colonized they have pushed all our native flora and they have almost formed pure strands this is senatorella vialis those are very interested names i will give but you don't worry about the names this is mycania and this is mimosa this is mimosa and this one is uh, the cassia uniflora hyptis those are interested but remember all the foreign weeds when once they enter they take away all our plants look at this can you see this this is uniflora very recently it has come uniflora recently come cassia uniflora entire region it has taken the right hand corner right uh, top is, is ipomia is another species which has come in the wetland system entire area it occupies removes the, our native flora indian flora is completely removed so that's another thing of course you are all familiar with this plant parthenium everybody knows parthenium in this country and in 1972 when i collected this plant for the first time there were only two plants near paschimavani railway station near mysore only two plants and i took almost three months to identify this plant because it was not there in any literature therefore today you can imagine 1972 there were two plants and today whole karnataka and my entire forest area forested areas forest cleared areas everywhere it has taken and how many species it has killed that we should have imagination so this was reported in current science 1972 when i uh, discovered this plant uh, uh, first time in the aquatic system it is the same thing now brahmakamal in the himalayas this is a highly important medicinal plant it is the state flower of uttar pradesh uttarakhand now uttar pradesh highly fragrant highly medicinal plant i will say this is one of sanjeevini plant but local people collect this selective removal of the species that is creating problem this is again another thing yes this is hermostatic super along the highway highway also people go collect this and it is a threat monoculture so therefore today we have no option there is no option but to conserve the whatever species is there there is no other option now we have to conserve our species that's the matter now hence conservation is not an option but it is very much as there is no option we have to only conserve so at the initiative at the global level lot of institutions and lot of societies organizations have taken lot of interest in conserving the flora at the global level say for example stockholm conference in the iucn formulated what is called the conservation world conservation strategy and that was accepted as by many countries including india that's when i will come to that later on in 2002 the united nations convention on biological diversity adopted global strategy for plant conservation which they abbreviated as gspc and this includes 16 targets to be achieved by the year 2020 16 target to be achieved by the 2020 16 targets are there please remember and by 2020 was the target period we are in 2023 not even one target have been achieved 
so that is the one right remember why where we stand so the gspc's aim is conserving plant diversity using plant diversity sustainably and building capacity for conservation these are the three main objectives of the gspc and uh, iuc and particularly is commendable job they are doing just like our uh, uh, the academy here they are doing commendable job at a global level and uh, they have prepared uh, IU, what is that iucn is international union for conservation of nature and natural resources if anybody asks in the question some questions may be asked in the objective question you should remember this what is uh, the iucn yes you should know that it's a uh, international union the the main purpose is they are all conserving the natural habitat and the natural bond the threatened species that's one it uses a set of quantitative criteria and to evaluate the extinction risk of thousands of species that's one thing and iucn model most of the countries are adopted including india we are also following the criteria given by iucn what is that criteria these are all the listed i have just listed a few criteria according to iucn not my categories please remember on the top extinct extinct in the wild and down below not evaluated not applicable all that i will say you should forget but i have shown some red dotted this red dotted uh, three critically endangered endangered vulnerable we should worry about these three issues very uh, important because nothing can be done Ex extinct means it is completely extinct it is not available in this world so nothing can be done extinct in the wild means somewhere in a remote botanic garden it may be growing who was nobody knows but if you are able to say that we should multiply and save that one that is the one now critically endangered means they are almost on road to extinction that is the one they have almost come to road to extinction we should there is chance to protect these species so we should worry about this endangered we should worry about this vulnerable that means already the causes of threat have started so that we should take i think uh, uh, the definitions i have already given here extinct what is the texting what is clear critically endangered critically endangered when it is facing extremely high risk of extinction endangered means it is endangered when it is not critically endangered all these definitions i have given you can go through that now iucn has also assessed 63837 species globally and out of that 81 species extinct can you imagine cheetah eggs become extinct and then we have so much of worry everybody made so much of alla gulla if grass becomes extinct if one orchid become extinct nobody bothers so this is the state difference between plants and animals see 81 species has extinct already and 63 has extinct in the wild 3947 is critically endangered that means they are all going on route to extinction they are about to go for extinction according to iucn at the global level that's the one thing and there is another concept biodiversity hotspots norman meyer is another one who has proposed this concept of protecting the the, the habitats he said areas where there is high concentration of endemic plants and areas where there is high anthropogenic threat and these two criteria should determine suppose i want to protect some areas in india what i should do his criteria is where there is high concentration of native or endemic flora native means it is indian flora only endemic plant should be there and also that area should have high anthropogenic threat See, threats are there so such areas are termed as hot spots i hope you are hot spot when you say hot spots are there in india it is not a proud thing we should feel sorry that india has hot spots why because 70% we have already killed those hot spot areas right what are those hot spots in india one is himalaya indo burma is the north east india this is the region north east region of india is another hot spot sundaland of the nicobar group and western ghat where we are all sitting western ghat is the, now in this again i will go one step further in the northeastern region particularly what i said is indo burma northeastern region it is not 70% it is 90% of the original flora is destroyed please remember 90% and in western ghats 90% of the original forest has gone so therefore these two areas are considered hottest hot spots 
so therefore we should feel sorry that we have hottest hot spots in our country on one side rich biodiversity on the other side hottest hot spots are also there in the country so therefore keeping all this in mind india has shown keen interest in conservation so our responses are too much in, in fact no other country has shown so much of interest in conserving our natural plants and the threatened species but india has shown keen interest now i have made some signatory to all international convention that means all conventions biological conventions india is a member it is all the rules that it follows we have passed the biological diversity bill and also we have already written national and state biodiversity board we have already established everywhere today the, the, the karnataka state biodiversity board is there so you, you must be familiar with this without their permission we cannot collect any plant without their permission we cannot send any plant all this is there there are set of rules for them so india has already established this 47 plant species are included in sites what is this sites you should know it is an abbreviation convention Con convention on international trade in endangered species of flora and fauna that is sites what is sites you should know convention on international trade in endangered species of flora and fauna that you should remember and uh, india is a member of sites and already we have declared 47 species are included in that and under man and biosphere reserve of unesco man and biosphere reserve program 18 biosphere reserves we have declared it's a big chunk biosphere areas are big chunk of forests and 18 biosphere reserves you are declared in our country so we have done commendable uh, efforts in protecting our habitat and threatened species right that's the one thing we have declared 109 national parks, 543 wildlife sanctuaries. You can, you can pick number 543 wildlife sanctuaries, 27 tiger reserves, 26 Ramsar sites. Ramsar sites are wetland areas, wetland sites where are the huge lakes are there. According to the international criteria, if they fulfill, they are all called Ramsar sites. Ramsar sites, uh, the, the name is Ramsar because the meeting was held in Ramsar in Iran and that convention is called Ramsar Convention. So Ramsar sites are those areas which come under that category. So we have declared 26 Ramsar sites and 17 wetland areas and many other heritage sites and all. So all this indicate that India has keen interest in protecting our. The very fact India has established a separate ministry, Ministry of Environment and Forest, that itself indicates that India is keen in protecting our bioresources. We have established national gene banks. We have established, uh, we have also published uh, through the Botanical Survey of India, red data books. What is red data books? Which are all critically endangered species, which are all going to root to extinction, I told. So all those species complete their biology, description, everything is given. And that is what is called red data book. So India has already published few publications on red data books. That's another thing. So that anybody wants to conserve, you take any species from the red data book, go on for put your efforts in conserving. And India is also providing lots of money through DBT and DST for research program, which are all aimed at conservation of rare species and habitat recovery programs. This is another thing that we have done. So, so much of efforts we have also shown in our country. Now, I told India is a member of all conventions. What is that convention? Convention on Wetlands of International Importance number one, that is in Ramsar, and Convention on Protection of World Cultural and Natural, that is UNESCO, Paris 1972, Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species Sites, I told, Washington 1973, India is a member. And according to this, if some unscrupulous elements collect any from protected plant and sends it to some other country, and if that some other country also happens to be a member of sites that will be confiscated there and that material will be sent back to India. So that is the agreement. So similarly, what we also do, if any material of Africa protected species comes here and we catch him, we, we of course he will be penalized, that's a different thing, but the material will be sent back to the country of origin. So that is the convention. So convention on Inter India is a member, so we have done this. <clears throat> Convention on Biological Diversity, last one, latest one is this. It has become almost an international law today. CBD, it is called CBD, Convention on Biological Diversity. It is almost an international uh, uh, law today. 
and we cannot according to this we cannot go and take the biodiversity of any other country suppose you take the biodiversity of the genetic material of any country and later on you develop a product from out of that 50% of the royalty has to be given to that country so these are all agreements are there anybody comes and takes the material from india and develops a product you should claim 50% royalty you give so that is convention so all these clear cut indications are there so india is a member of all this so therefore high priority is given for conservation bsi has already completed the red data sheets of 1180 species i think this is just only the number and compiled a list of indian plants in iucn red list and today we are estimating 1500 species which are all critically endangered threatened species out of which 1182 we have already completed and red data sheets published are 708 so that's a good progress we have made in the how do we assess rare species now the next question is suppose in your own campus college campus if you are asked to assess your own uh, endangered species in your campus how do we do that scrutiny there are three method one is scrutiny of specimens scrutiny of literature all this you can skip actual field surveys both qualitative and quantitative assessments you can do actual field surveys and qualitative is by seeing yes i have seen in the entire 1 km area not one plant is there so it is a rare plant or quantitative by quadrat method there is a method called quadrat method ecology i think if you have studied ecology little bit of ecology there is a quadrat a, a 10 in 10 feet by 10 feet quadrat we throw in different places and see in 100 quadrats how many places you get a particular species if in all the quadrat you get the same species then it is not rare if it gets only in one quadrant then it is rare so that is all i think uh, you should uh, uh, read this yes next now i think i will skip this some facts are ignored somehow you should also understand this nam idrolge yen madidu antandre conservation andre ga forest hogibuttu bring some three four plants rare plant put in the botanical garden belbuttu yes now we have conserved this species anta now helthivi but that is not conservation remember what is a species species is a conglomeration of several populations see one species is distributed from kanyakumari to say kashmir adu ella allallallallal madhya pradesh species madhya rajasthan species or mizoram species nagaland species different different species are slightly different so that is a conglomeration of several population suppose you go and bring one plant from somewhere and grow what you are conserving you are conserving a part of the species only you are not conserving the full species part of the species part of the species means fragmentation of the species the entire species is there we have fragmented that species fragmentation leads to the lack lack of genetic diversity the diversity comes low if the species is connected continuously the genetic diversity is very high but if it is fragmented genetic diversity becomes low the moment any species loses the genetic diversity the species enters the road to extinction so therefore this fact we have ignored many of us we do not know conservation we take a program go to the forest bring some three four plants go it in the botanical garden and say sir i have conserved this so please remember we are conserving only a part of the species so therefore this is not really conservation there are there are two methods of conservation number one ex situ conservation in situ conservation in situ conservation antandre protecting the plants where it is as it is in a forest it is growing you protect in the forest itself suppose it is not possible to protect in the forest there is danger then you bring that plant in the botanical garden or in a protected area in your own place you can grow it outside its natural habitat that is ex situ conservation these two differences you should remember what is ex situ what is in situ uh, in situ conservation so where in situ is preferable you can protect in the natural habitat is preferable but if it is not possible then go for ex situ conservation i think that's the i'm sorry now the iucn has given 10 categories of protected areas 10 categories out of 10 categories india has nine types all these i have listed 
what are those national park wildlife sanctuary i have already told how many are there how many biosphere reserves are there all this that shows the interest that india has to, that is the response that we have shown for conservation of area total area covered in india i have shown here current protected area status in india national parks 103 wildlife sanctuaries 543 conservation reserves 73 that's this that shows the amount of uh, the protected areas india has already conserved but is it sufficient if you ask a question i will say no still we need to collect because there are many species which are not in any of these areas so they need to be brought under conservation area there are large number of such species which need to be protected now in india i told 18 biosphere reserves are there under the unesco chain nilgiri gulf of manar sundarban nanda devi amar kantak a great big part these are all the ones which have already got in india map i have shown some of these uh, Yes, I am going very fast now because the time is also very short. Now, national parks at present 109 national parks exist in India and cover an area of 37,534 square kilometer under national parks. That's one, and that amounts to 1 point only 1.14 percent of the country's geographical area. Much less. Still, we need to protect much more, right? Madhya Pradesh has got, of course, maximum number. These are all the protected areas, national parks, tiger reserves, right? Wildlife sanctuary. What is wildlife sanctuary? Sanctuaries. Wildlife sanctuaries means they are all species oriented. For tiger, or for nepenthes, rhododendron, separate, separate. So that is the one. Only citrus species. That is the sanctuaries. Wildlife sanctuaries. Species oriented. Suppose 543 wildlife sanctuaries means each one of these. is oriented in protecting one species one particular species suppose i have to protect say tiger i will give an example i cannot protect tiger separately without any forest so the tiger habitat itself has to be protected same is the case here 543 wildlife sanctuaries means 543 species oriented habitats are protected including the forest that's a, again a commendable effort that we have made right and there are also world heritage sites what is world heritage sites there are certain unique areas unique areas having you know evolutionary significance exceptional beauty or having which throw light on the phytogeographic significance some such areas are regarded as the natural heritage sites and india has already 32 in india of course they are not natural six natural heritage sites we have six na temple is also a heritage site but i am not talking of that kind of thing natural heritage sites means where vegetation flora and fauna occur what are those manas wildlife sanctuary kaziranga these are all natural heritage sites now once you declare it as a natural heritage site you are not supposed to although it belongs to india you cannot go and do any of your developmental activity you cannot cut anything so there is a committee which oversees the development of this the international funds come for the development of this so therefore they are all protected i hope you understand this please if you can ask questions now or also ramsar i told there are 26 wetlands already declared as ramsar sites some of these i have just listed in our country what are those ramsar sites gene sanctuaries for example we have citrus gene sanctuary in meghalaya citrus gene sanctuary means this nimbe hanin gidu jati nimbe hanin gidu jati na ella nimbe hanin gidu jati they because they grow in that area too many species are there that particular region is protected and call it as a citrus gene sanctuary similarly nepenthes what i i do not i will show you a photograph nepenthes sanctuary it is an insect eating uh, uh, insectivorous plant we have only it's endemic only one place in our country that is sanctuary jain in jaintia hills and nepenthes sanctuary is declared there and similarly rhododendron and orchid sanctuaries we have declared now what is that nepenthes uh, sanctuary i will this is that nepenthes those of you who have not seen this the terminal portion of the leaf for the leaf for example the leaf tip leaf tip gets modified into a picture the you can see that picture i hope you are very clear yeah it modifies into a picture which contains a kind of digestive juice which can absorb the animal protein directly that's one thing and it's said to be a good remedy for peptic ulcer good remedy for peptic culture so we should conserve these are these very unique biologically curiosity already biologically curious i accept 
and we will make a nice photograph laminate it put it in your seminar room but that is not the end of it how best we can utilize this what is good for man human welfare so these are the ones we should try to develop into a product global level product so that the economy increases on one side and human race also gets benefit on the other side with this very quickly i come to threatened plants now i come to threatened habitats what is threatened habitat are those areas which support unique species ecosystems but have come on road these things are unique habitats these are the one threatened for example sacred forests i will talk about this wetlands miristika swamps in western ghats particularly uttar kannada I, i don't know some of you must be students must be there from that region miristika swamps in uttar kannada a very unique species very unique habitat you don't find anywhere else in this world so such habitats today are in danger so therefore these are called threatened habitats right now what is the problem say for example a swamp valley i have to mathuran mala swamp valley it is said in dehradun western himalaya at one time 100 years ago there was a continuous uh, swamp forest from west himalaya to the east now today all the intermediate areas have all become agricultural fields only the the kaziranga valley in the uh, northeast uh, region it is a swamp vegetation and in dehradun region foothills uh, mathuran mala swamp so in between area it is already killed so therefore mathuran mala swamp is considered as a threatened community threatened swamp community and it is i have given some details presently you know how many species for example kanjilal described high altitude quercus in can i have given names you don't bother olea glandulifera as a pyrosperma celtis a few species today if you go and see that that was in 1901 kanjilal has described today you find only the stumps the trees are cut only the stumps are there so the vegetation is destroyed so therefore we should worry we should protect that mathuran mala swamp forest right this was the picture i have taken when i was in dehradun swamp vegetation of dun valley typical vegetation there are many trees are cut some stumps are only remaining and they need to be protected so what is the great threat today is that they are diverting the, the water draining the water for agriculture human human population increases agriculture land is required water is required they are draining the water so with the result swamp vegetation in dun valley is greatly threatened now i told uttar kannada we have a very unique uh, uh, swamp called miristika swamp they have got stilt roots can you see this just like mangroves stilt roots unique stilt roots we find uh, in the species there they are they are all very strongly they anchor that and it, the area is always inundated in water and that kind of unique species particularly of miristika predominantly miristika species are there of course there are 63 species are reported 130 flowering plant species uh, swamps are endemic to many of them are endemic to our uh, uh, uttar kannada region now the main species in the miristika swamps are miristika fatua i have written in red jimna krantala these are the two species very abundant they reveal high diversity in fact uh, kfri in kerala some scientists have recorded 65 tree species and 72 species of shrubs and herbs which are all restricted to miristika swamps today miristika swamps are critically endangered and i call them living fossils what is a living fossil at one time it was very predominant distributed in many places but in large areas today because of whatever anthropogenic disturbances they are all confined to small communities are only some here and there some patches you can see so therefore they have become living fossil community miristika swamps are living fossil community today right i think i'm going much faster i think some of the swamp mangrove shola forest similarly the western ghats there are large number of uh, shola forest unique forest nowhere else you find in this country in this world shola forest which are all unique species of daphne phylum urea rhododendron mahonia berberry some of these which are all himalayan species they are not south indian species many of the himalayan species occur here why it is a phytogeographic discussion i will not do now because there are reasons for that 
So Himalayan elements have come here and they are all very unique species confined only in the high mountain areas which are all what we call the, uh, the uh, solar forest. Now the sacred forest, I call the sacred forest as death traps. What is a sacred forest? We go and worship, we protect some forest, sacred forest we think it is safe but in our country it is not safe now. If take for example, in the northeastern region, I have shown this picture, you can see here. This is this Chirapunji area. There is a sacred forest in Chirapunji area. Very dense and surrounding all grassy hilltops are there. Grassy, grass covered up there. Very, and this is protected because of the human beliefs. If you go there, there is a tiger comes and kills you. Or your ancestors, so soul is there, they will come and uh, curse you. Some belief attached to this forest, so it has been surviving. But today, this belief is eroding. They are also studying in all big, big cities. So, Pune, Bombay, Madras, Calcutta, all those places. How do they don't believe what their forefathers used to tell? Otherwise, there is a tiger and his soul is there. A snake will come and bite. That belief has gone. So, therefore, the existence of this forest is a matter of time. They have been surviving for millions of years. Remember millions of years, not even thousands of years. Millions of years because of the, the belief attached to that. What is greatness about this, the sacred forest? You please see, you go and survey here one kilometer. One kilometer if you survey, you get more than 1500 species, which is much more than the entire state of Rajasthan. Whole Rajasthan, the Liam Sikata, the one kilometer, you will see, you will get this. That is the richness of flora in the sacred forest. But today, sacred forests have become death traps. So therefore, under that unique ecosystem, threatened habitats, I have also brought the sacred forests also to be considered so that they should be given immediate protection. Otherwise, they may not be uh, living for a long time. I think that's the conclusion. It is a collective responsibility. Nobody, I think this is uh, uh, the Ministry of Environment will do or uh, Indian Academy will do or Karnataka Academy will do. No, it is everybody's responsibility. It is at the international level, people also have to contribute. Even uh, the local man also has to contribute. It is a collective responsibility. As I said, at the top, many scientists, many uh, agencies are working in, in uh, protecting our flora. Now, you take for example, there are one or two success stories, but I do not know whether they are really success stories. This is one story. Habardia, hepta neuron, uh, this is a grass species, this is that species, grass species which was considered as an extinct species that was being discovered by one scientist from Kolapur University, Dr. Yadav, it's a creditable uh, discovery. He has discovered and he has now not only discovered that, he has multiplied that in different places in the similar habitat, it grows in unique habitat. What is that unique habit? Where there is water always in the, where there is waterfalls are there, where water is dripping, that kind of habitats it grows. Very unique habitat and this habitat is critically endangered today. So what he has done, he has taken this species and multiplied in different places. So this is that, that rather he has put in different places. Today we claim that yes, this species is saved. But please remember again as I told, as I told species is a conglomeration of many populations. So only a part of the species we have considered. So therefore, the genetic diversity is low. So today there are 100 plants. After five years, 50 plants. Third year, it will be 40. So this number goes on declining. Ultimately, the species may be. So the success story, what we claim today, how far it is successful, we do not know because it is a matter of time that only will tell. Now, this is a case of unique. Again, this is other Sorkoli I have taken. Look at this, Kainam malabaricum, unique species and very large unique species, highly important medicinally. And uh, uh, it is said five centimeter in, per, per day it grows. The leaves grow five centimeter per day, unique species. And this was recently reported as a new species from a unique place in, in, the, in the Kerala region. But today, what has happened? You see this, the same area has completely the name of development that unique species has gone. 
so this is what is called development without knowing what is happening development so this same thing you can imagine what a wonderful what a wonderful lana lana um, um, species was growing in the canal now that the species of course i have given down below the elaborate photo and all that you can see that one now today all in the long lived there is no other lived longer than this that is the interesting kind of species but today it is completely extinct so habitat destruction has taken so much in the name of the, the the plantations are there even today but our the land has gone completely so this is where we are all killing the uh, plants <coughs> so under ex situ conservation uh, of course i told ex situ means in the plant grow in the botanical garden so this is calcutta botanic garden this is one tree only don't think there are so many trees only one tree this is ficus which has spread so much with branches and that one tree just only i have shown and this is the calcutta botanic garden and today major botanical garden in our country only big ones i have listed not small small ones jawaharlal nehru that is the trivandrum there is one beautiful garden malabar botanic garden calicut university botanic garden calicut and nbri in lucknow we have a beautiful garden and shivaji university palapur there is a beautiful garden a few gardens are there which are all mainly doing conservation work bringing rare plants threatened plants grow them in the botanical garden bsi is another uh, uh, great organization in our country have all these centers they have established botanic garden bada pani shilan gangta kitanagar alabad mundwa yarka jodhpur port blair all these places they have established botanical garden and today large number of species they have brought been rediscovered and introduced into the botanical garden this is the significant contribution i hope you appreciate botanical survey en maartta ide ivella you should know at least you should know what is rehabilitation means bringing plants and then at least growing all that you should do at least you should know all those some of these things if there are questions you can ask me last part is this the tribal wisdom see scientific conservation is something different we have our country is famous in also tribal wisdom tribal wisdom means the local knowledge local people protect the forest what is that just now i told sacred groves hey if, if you go and cut a tree uh, the there is a devil which come and catch you it's a belief but that belief has made these forests to survive for such long millions of years so that is one traditional way of protection now i have shown this picture again again please understand this existence of these forests is a matter of time question of time i have written it is a matter of time today because the belief has eroded the younger generation don't have any faith so if you believe that existed for millions of years in our own generation it is disappeared so therefore you can imagine the threat that is going on and also there are many trees we don't cut for example bilwa oh, this is offered to lord shiva that you know you all know bilpatra anta gottala ella we must have worshiped so there are some species we are all you know attached to god so there is antasapalas kadamba saraka asoka masita sitting in the in the when ravana took her uh, that ashoka vana so it is a sacred plant nobody will touch that similarly ficus venalensis krishna is sitting on that and krishna's tree so nobody wants to cut so that is another one like this a few species because of the beliefs this is tribal wisdom and conservation now there are also each nakshatra how many nakshatras are there you must know there are 27 nakshatras each nakshatra is attributed to one plant for example bamboo sai for punarvasu nakshatra each if you what nakshatra you belong you can please see from this list and that particular plant you worship you will prosper in your life that is the belief so therefore they will not cut so these are all traditional ways of protecting the forest see all the 27 species are given you can just say and then each planet is associated with a particular part beautia manos for macacia for mars mercury venus all these things the last slide is this that ex situ you see in a small way each one of you can contribute to in your own college you all join make a group in your own college if there is a space take the help of scientists available locally identify the rarest species and try to introduce and at least nurse it as long as you are in that college at least you your next generation will take care so that a forest will come of the critically endangered species 
what i did i was in simia bangalore i had a very small project of 10 lakh i brought almost all the tree species of western ghats which are all endemic endemic means which occur only in uh, uh, the western ghat and i have grown those things and today there is a big forest of endemic plants right in bangalore you can all go and examine see those plants which are all planted by me so therefore this is a little bit contribution from individuals to protect the rare species so i have given some actions for conservation i think time is over so i am clicking so therefore let us all contribute our bit to save our biological heritage thank you very much for hearing i there are one or two quick questions you can ask as i told if and if still you want to ask me my email you have noted down you will write to me i will reply to all your questions uh, later also there is no problem thank you so much <clears throat> yes i think now we can questions if there are one or two we will finish i have hurriedly finished the sir thank yeah. you very much for a very scholarly and insightful talk your students would have got lot of take home message from your talk for conservation of plants on behalf of kstta and all the participants i thank you immensely sir for your time and very very informative talk thank you sir okay if there are questions you can ask otherwise thank you right to me if you are getting any other question or doubt chain or is there chat box alli kelbodu sir avaru uttara kodtare ha they can clearly or even they can write to me by email उटक्षण उत्साह i would like to once again thank uh, ksta particularly uh, professor ramesh and all his colleagues rather uh, for giving me this wonderful opportunity in fact i like talking i if you want me to talk for 5 hours i will talk no problem for me but they had given me one hour but i was slightly excited uh, thank you so much sir for giving me this opportunity thank you so much i will uh, uh, take some other opportunity to discuss uh, more issues thank you <clears throat> thank you sir ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳಿಗೆ ತಮ್ಮ ತಮಗೆಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ತುಂಬ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ನಾಳೆ ಮತ್ತೊಂದು ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸದೊಂದಿಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ತಮ್ಮನ್ನು ಭೇಟಿ ಆಗೋಣ ಅಲ್ಲಿವರೆಗೆ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಒಂದು ಮನವಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಸಿದ್ಧಗೌಡರು ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಮೊದಲೇ ಪ್ಲೇಯರ್ ಶೇರ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಇದೆ ಆ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಏನಾದ್ರೂ ಡೌಟ್ಸ್ ಇದ್ರೆ ಮೊದಲೇ ಬರ್ಕೊಂಡು ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸಕರನ್ನ ಕೇಳಬಹುದು ಅಂತ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಧನ್ಯವಾದ पांडे रे निम्स